so it's Sunday morning. I guess about 10 o'clock. Boy's got a game. A couple hours. Look forward to that. That's about all I look forward to on Sundays anymore. Because I know, even as a kid, it was... Unless it was during the summer. Or some kind of vacation. Holiday vacation. Sometimes it takes me a little while to get started on a Sunday. But overall, the feeling's there. The last day of being where I want to be with the people I want to be with and doing some of the things I'd rather do. Excuse me. Ugh, Sundays. Morning. Monday. Day something or other. I think I'm just going to uh, start throwing up generic days, whatever. Here on out. Alright, rainy day too. Um, I guess it's better than being out here at 8 a.m. and sweat my nads off. doing is combining my Sundays and Mondays um, at nap at for now because uh, my weekends are usually pretty busy now especially with Joe being on two different teams uh, I and mean, even today he's got a game it's varsity only but both teams need to suit up and well he's He's had just as much varsity play me, as he has JV team play. Uh, something that's hot on uh, some of the parents and a couple of the kids' minds uh, this weekend and I'm sure today uh, is the fact that uh, Joe got absolutely no playing time in their uh, JV game on Saturday. there in every practice. He cleans up after every practice like the freshmen are supposed to. He doesn't bow out. He doesn't disappear. He doesn't dip out like a lot of the kids do. Uh, he's been there in every single camp session, every single training session, everything. Through his seizures and all, he's made it on time. He's made it there. He stayed the whole time. He's done it. 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 And then the bench of uh, and then there was one other teammate of his who got, he got about five, ten minutes worth of play, but he came off at the end of the game, dejected and, 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 and angry. So I'm like, well, you got time on the field. But anyhow. Uh, but just to recap the weekend, it was a pretty decent weekend, uh, mood wise. Uh, you know, I okay, haven't had any problems. We've all been gelling together. We video chatted with Shannon the other day, and it was uh, it was good. Everybody was nice, and you know, it's funny. Joe gets all quiet, and, you know, being a goof and all, but you know, this boy's called her more than anybody, any one of us, his mother or, you know, or myself, have you know, contacted uh, Shannon. So it's cool. She's doing great. I, I think that uh, we're still trying to, uh, you know, the remaining four of us in the house are still trying to adjust and adapt to, to just being four of us. You know, it, it's been five, five of us for ten years, and it's been a hell of a ten years. So it was ten years where five of us really, 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 not just uh, growing together, but pushed and, you know, made, I guess you could say, to, to grow together, and, uh, you know, I, I think it was good for all of us, and to see that uh, Shannon is still moving forward and progressing and uh, succeeding thus far, uh, tells me that she's 
not letting anything, and she never really did seem to let anything hold her back other than our small town. And uh, she's put all that behind her now. Uh, but as far as the namesake of the miniseries, <laughs> bipolar disorder, mental illness, dystonia, and epileptic, epileptic life, um, and Joe had another seizure last night. Well, early, early, early this morning. And uh, sadly, I can, um, I can almost predict. I can't really say when he's going to have one, but the nights uh, that he's going to have one. Uh, whew, easy. I don't know if it makes it any easier or not. You know, if I knew what time they were going to occur, then maybe I could set a bit of an alarm, you know, to, uh, to get in there. I don't know. Because the, uh, the main thing is that we are in there or by his side and his uh, emergency medication is nearby. Excuse me. In the event that the seizure goes more than uh, three minutes. Three or five minutes. Pretty sure it's three, but regardless, uh, you know, three o'clock is when we run and get the med bag. So, uh, you know, I mean, other than that, oh shit! Come on, people. You're sitting there watching this person, this kid, this child, your child. experience. He said that he has seen himself having these things um, and he has described it as floating above himself looking down at himself and seeing what was going on. But once it's over you know, not really remembering anything um, you know, that led right up to it. Uh, the rest of the day and the other memories, thank God, are still intact. And a little fuzzy at times. But lately, they've been pretty intense. Uh, I don't know if maybe because he's getting older, getting taller, and, uh, hormones, all that good stuff. Um, but now, well, another important thing to be in there uh, by his side as the seizure begins, especially now that they're a little more, I don't want to say violent, but they're definitely more intense uh, to make sure the uh, person does not hurt themselves or somebody else nearby. Um, now, Shannon has pretty decent arm strength for tossing those girls up for all those years being a cheerleader. So, and she's got a big mouth. If she needed to, she could always fly out of bed and keep Joe from rolling off or you know, grab his, his forearms, grab his wrists keep him from punching himself or hitting the bed or slamming his head into something. Um, one night, Shannon had to grab his legs and I had to hold his arms. And his, his hands, he was almost beating his face in and his feet were kicking. Uh, she had to lay across him. He's got some tree trunks. Um, he was kicking the hell out of the bunk bed and I didn't want him to you know, bust his ankle or break his shit or anything like that. But lately, they've been really, really intense. I mean, even when these first started, he was about 10 years old. Uh, I remember one Sunday in particular, that's when I realized just how strong these things are and how, you know, it doesn't matter how strong you are, this shit exhibits, um, you know, it, it puts every fiber of your muscles that it's affecting to work. It's, you know, like, you know, the problem I have with my neck and my back. Yeah. It's to the point now where you could see the muscles in his eyelids rippling. You could see under his skin the muscles, the different muscle groups and different fibers rippling as they're being uh, told, more or less, 
to to react or be told to despise and to you know contract and release, contract, release, contract, release at such a high rate. Uh, when I was ten, we were I had whatever had happened that night, and I called out of work, and I just I knew I needed to be home. And he's sitting on the sofa next to me. He wasn't feeling too good. And, didn't want to go to school the next day, so I understood, but still trying to get through that, hey, bub, you know, it's 10 o'clock, it's, it's time to go to bed, you know, oh, welcome dead, welcome dead, I'm like, nah, you're going to school, and he started to lean over, put his head on my lap, and then he sat up after a little bit, and then took a gasp, which is usually the, the indicator, and I said, oh, shit, and I called for my wife, and he's leaning over again, right into my lap, and he's going, 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 and I had a can of, a tall can of iced tea sitting on the floor. And my wife's busy with the other girls. And at that time, Riley was probably, what, Joe was 10. Riley had to be about uh, five or six. And he was uh, we trying to get one of the girls to come back in the room quick. Because I couldn't, I couldn't keep him up there. And I said, he's going to roll, he's going to roll, he's going to roll. Come on, people. The sign says left lane merges, or left lane ends, merge. That means, oh, I'm going to keep driving in it until the very last minute. Ah, oh, you freaking idiots. Then I'll get over. So, yeah. You know, 10 years old. And he wasn't, you know, he was a lot shorter then than he is now. And all I could do was, uh, you know, hold tight to him and more or less roll to the floor with him. And... I couldn't, uh, I couldn't stop it. All I could do was kind of anchor it and let him land on me, more or less. But because of the uh, the strength that, uh, that these seizures come on with, I, I couldn't stop him from falling off the sofa. And in the end, I couldn't stop him from smacking the top of his forehead on the doggone can on the floor. But, you know... Imagine now. I mean, he's taller. He's almost he's almost five foot seven. He's trimmer, but he is a lot more muscular than he was at, at that point. So I mean, it's it's you truly feel helpless. It uh, it really sucks balls. Uh, it usually lives leaves him even if he's get his, and this one really hurts me, uh, one of the things that really hurts me is, uh, he goes to school, he's, aside from a massive headache he's been having afterwards, he used to just be a, you know, regular headache, but he says now the headaches are terrible afterwards, um, he does alright, but I know it can't be, uh, I'm assuming it can't be all that easy, um, especially on a Monday, starting off the school week, and you've got so much to do, so much to keep track of. He already has an issue with, uh, you know, memory retention. You know, now you've got this thing wreaking havoc on your brain because sometimes he's left a little, uh, I don't want to say confused, but things get a little scattered up there. Sort of like when uh, it was Iron Man 3 and uh, Jarvis, the suit, needed to... Uh, I think I, I need to go to sleep now. And as he's charging the suit up, he's, you know, everything is back online, but when I get to the end of the sentence, I sometimes say the wrong tomato. <laughs> yeah. I hate to say it, but I mean, it's true, and until I find a better word or phrase for it, the kid is a trooper. He uh, definitely inspires me. He definitely infuriates me. <laughs> But the inspiration outweighs everything else. And if he can do it, I can do it. Simple as that. You know, so, other than that, um, you know, this weather isn't helping my pain at all. Sucks. <laughs> Sucks balls. Um, I'm running low on my pain aids. So, yeah, probably won't be able to refill that until Friday or Saturday, you know, at the earliest. So that's got to be kind of feeling left and it's not off. <laughs> but as I said, you know, it's better than having three of bat wings at 8.30 or swamp ass at 9 o'clock. Life for life. 
it. Yeah. It's chill. It's calm today. Haven't had any kind of uh, issue. Are they closing this lane? Or, I don't know. But, as I said a minute ago, it is Monday. So, we'll see how this day and how this week goes. Huh? <laughs> Alright. I'm going to wrap it up for now. Hopefully have a little bit more to add later on. Uh, I hope that uh, any one of you, or the one of you, who uh, are following this series or viewing or finding something uh, in my incoherent ramblings at times, uh, finding something useful, helpful, entertaining, or worth sharing. Um, as I said, be free, uh, please feel free to share the link. Um, share it off of, uh, off of YouTube. I think my, my, my privacy is set on Facebook where you may not be able to share it. But anyhow, yeah, find it on YouTube, share it, like it, subscribe. And um, I do know there's one person out there watching these videos. She's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful 10-year-old. I keep trying to tell her, so these things aren't really geared. They're not aimed at 10-year-old young ladies, kiddo. I know. But I like to watch and give you views and subscribe and watch your stuff. <laughs> All right, doll face. It's ah, my girl. So help a brother out. And I'll help your brothers out and your sisters. And uh, yeah, we'll build something great together. Until then, I'll see you later. And I swear to you, this is a Ford, not a Dodge. D O D G E. Drips oil, drips grease everywhere. Why is my truck dripping oil, dripping grease? I'd rather have it drip oil, drip grease than be found on road dead. S O R D. They would have made one for Chevy, but it's, the name's just too long. Chevrolet. Just call it a Chevy. Chevy is enough. That's like French for turd. Let turd. Ah. It's a roller coaster. Identifying problems. That's a that's a topic I'll run with for a momento. The benefits to having um, lost or you know it turns up and down and doesn't get quieter. What the hell? Um, yeah. I hear a lot of kids talk about, well, we lost, we lost, because we made mistakes, we made mistakes on the field. Okay, well, the books say, yes, it's a loss, but if you can learn from that, then it's not a loss, it's not a total loss. You learn from it, you improve on it. Um, benefit that I had to having you know, lost my, my marbles at one point. I'm monitoring myself, as long as I'm paying attention and listening to me, I can see the warning signs, I can see the things that I'm doing, or the things that I'm feeling, uh, the way that I'm feeling, or even when there's other people around me, whether they realize it or not, um, that are aiding in my unwinding.
taking a loss as a loss and taking a loss as a learning experience and moving forward from that. Uh, you know, my fall, it, uh, it was messy. It was really just a big freaking mess. And it happens quick. Several months before I went into the hospital, I went to the hospital in September, and I had said something a few months prior to about, oh my gosh, I need to go. I, I need to. I need to go check in somewhere. And at the time, my wife agreed with me. She said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it kind of uh, the talk, the the thought, the idea, whatever, the notion, just kind of dissipated realizing what was truly happening, it was my other self, for lack of a better term, that was taking over, like the last clear thought and, uh, and idea to escape my face was, oh my gosh, I, I gotta go check in somewhere, I I've gotta be, you know, I've gotta be committed somewhere. <laughs> briefly. Uh, I need help. And after that, it was almost as if, you know, Mr. Wheeler, you know, it was a Jekyll and Hyde thing. Uh, you know, Mr. Hyde took over and, uh, you know, it sucked terribly for everybody around me too. I think it sucked more for them than it did me, and that's what eats me up every single freaking day. But uh, let me tell you, I mean, things just nothing, nothing mattered, nothing made me happy. Uh, before uh, my wife and I had, it, it, had come up with a plan, she said, "Listen, you're, you know, I'm off on such and such date. You have off this day. It was uh, the end of summer, so it was uh, Labor Day." And uh, she says, well, we haven't gone down to the shore yet with the kids. Why don't you, um, you know, come over Friday. We'll go down whatever day, whatever we did. We made a weekend or, or at least a one-day getaway down the shore. My favorite place, Ocean City. It's my home away from home. Gosh, if I, if I could live there, if I could move there. Uh And even that, I'm, I'm thankful that I didn't drag my children down because I think that was one of the most fun times they ever had down the shore. Uh, it was great to see them. It was great to see everybody smiling and we were together. And I wasn't uh, too, too, too bad at that time. Uh, it was like the uh, my true self scratching and, and clawing, trying to you know, break the surface and, 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 you know, and say, hi, I'm here, here we go. But maybe, maybe since that didn't happen, maybe that was the, obviously it was meant to happen that way, but maybe it was better that way because if I did emerge, then it would have just been, ah, well, I'm good, you know, I'm back, okay, it was just a hiccup, put a band-aid on it and move on. No, <laughs> no, it's like a lot of people that I know that get hooked on something and they're saying, oh yeah, I'm going to go to this outpatient rehab, outpatient rehab, and like, You've been on this for how long? You know, hooked on it. Wow, idiots. Sorry. Um, and yeah, you think that this, you know, in one day program, out the next day, and they're going to monitor you or you monitor yourself, whatever you, and that's going to help? No, man. You got to drop everything. <laughs> you know, we're fourth and long here. And if you're going to go for it, you need to go all the way for it. Unfortunately, uh, the hospital that I went to, they didn't really do anything for me. And because of uh, insurance reasons, uh, they only covered a week's stay, which is probably a lot better than what my, the same insurance will cover now. 
you know, that'll probably cover five days and still send me a bill for 50% of that. You know, ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. So, if you ever hear that I've flipped my noodle again, just kindly find where I'm at, grab yourself a good, thick wooden bat, and just, you know, maybe a 22 ouncer right to the back of my skull here, about two inches above the scar, and just let me have it, please. If and only if that happens. Um, yeah, it, it didn't, uh, I didn't get the treatment that I needed. Uh, what I did get, though, which was needed, uh, excuse me, was a little bit of a, a break. But it was only so much because I had the break and I had time to think, but without getting my thoughts straight, without getting my head right, all I'm going to do, all I was doing was tossing around the same uh, dumb thoughts that uh, landed me in the hospital in the first place. There, you know, this, this whole mental illness thing, it's Truly, it takes over. Um, I had pretty much just become that person that is, that was telling the counselor, or whatever, that I only saw twice. Once a few days before I went home, and then another, uh, I guess a day before they let me go. And man, did I just freaking act my way through that. You know, the answers were coming out. They were the same answers I would give you today. But there was nothing behind it. Feelings had completely shut off. I barely cared for myself. Well, if you saw pictures of me from then, you would see that I was barely caring for myself. Uh, I was just terrible. I looked like a strung out Medea. Every time I come across one of those pictures, deleted. <laughs> Don't need any more reminders. Um, yeah, and then I come home and in and fall right back into you know, the rut. So pay attention to yourself. Pay attention to uh, you know if you've been there before and you've come back. Give yourself some time to evaluate uh, how you were thinking then, uh, how you were feeling, uh, as compared to how you feel now or how you feel when feel fine, or when you know that you're on on track, uh, compare those feelings of being on track to when you are off, and you'll see just how far, uh, how far down you, you've fallen, and you fall, it's nobody's, nobody's fault, it happens, I fall over all the time, of course it's due to my dystonia that throws off my balance, but it's not the same as just throwing yourself on the ground, giving up, quitting, you know, or jumping, and just flop, whatever. Now, falling down, sliding, it happens. We're human, we're flawed, just, shit just happens. Uh, so don't ever think that, you know, oh, I allow this to happen, and I can't believe I did it, did it, because when the mind breaks, the mind breaks. When it snaps, it snaps, that's it. That's it. Do what you want. You might be able to prolong your, uh, you know, holding it together. But eventually, that's like pulling taffy. It's going to get thin and it's going to snap. Unless you get yourself, you help yourself, or uh, you seek help in the right areas. Don't hesitate. My hesitation... <sighs> caused 
three of the most important people in my life to suffer. Especially my two oldest, well, my oldest and my son, let's put it that way. Um, you know, my son already had difficulties. He already had a lot of things going against him. And... I, I added to that. Because I was selfish as well. It's just... You'll be amazed at how many people you hurt uh, when these things go left untreated, unattended to. Uh, you'll hurt even more people when you don't acknowledge don't uh, study yourself and acknowledge the <coughs> excuse me the warning signs you know when we feel ourselves getting physically ill uh, I got something in my throat or you know I feel hot and cold I feel fever coming on right away we're reaching for the vitamin C we're you know, flushing our system with water we're we're doing whatever we're taking preventative measures for our health okay so why not do the same? I'm sorry, my ear is so dry. Why not do the same for your, your mental and emotional health? Because those two things, emotion and mental health, they affect, heavily affect, those around you. you know, God forbid, but you know, I can walk around the house with some kind of a cold or flu or whatever and there's a possibility that my family may not get it but if you're living in the same house with these people and your mind is not right and it's sick well, that affects everybody deeply whether you see it or not uh, another thing that tends to happen to the sick person is uh, kind of like what, what we get from other people. You, know, you see your family upset and, and you know, crying maybe, or they're telling you that there's something that's bothering them that you, know, that you may be the source of, and you look at them and think, but you look fine. You don't look like you're having a hard time. You don't da 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 da, and you don't da 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 da. Well, you know what? What we look like and what we feel are two completely different things. Granted, yes, when we are happy, sometimes it shows, okay? And when we're angry, sometimes it shows. You can ask people who know me, people I've worked with in the past, present, family, whatever. You know, my dad told me I was in my mid-20s. And he had said something to the effect of... Uh, I'm surprised you had that many friends in town or around the area. The way you walk around with that mean scowl on your face all the time. I didn't know. I didn't think I walked around with a mean look. But as I got older, I would hear that from a lot of people. Now, if I truly did have this you know, mean scowl upon my face on a regular basis, uh then shoot. <laughs> um, sorry. That train of thought just jumped the rails and went down a dirt road. But I, as I said, I was getting older and I was hearing it from more people. Oh, you know, people would tell me I look unapproachable. And then I would get, it's probably 50-50. Just as many people say, no, you, you look totally inviting. You look, you know, like we can ask you anything. You know, we can bug you in the middle of your day and you want to, uh, to fly off the handle. Da, 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 da. No, I wouldn't. Not that you'd see or hear. Yeah, so yeah, not everything is on the surface, folks. Yeah, things that hurt that are on the surface, surface are easy to deal with. You can kiss it away, wash it off, put a band-aid on it, put some itchy owie, acid tracing, whatever some monkey blood on it, rub it in there, rub some dirt in it, and it's good. But feelings and emotion and 
make mental stability. You can't just uh, rub a little dirt on it and call it good. different teams. My children aren't in special needs classes. My kid doesn't have you know, epilepsy and uh, neurologist appointments all the time. And I don't have neurologist appointments all the time. And you know, I don't have chronic pain and mental illness. And you know, I don't have a, a, a freshman in college 300 plus miles away. And you know, heed the warning signs, folks. Especially if you're younger than I am children are younger than mine or at any time at any time the sooner the better if you feel that you need to be you know, checked in somewhere go do it they're not going to yell at you they'll take your shoelaces and your belt and your drawstrings and your jewelry and your necklaces and bracelets Although I could have just taken the elastic out of my underwear and, and, and did something with it, but uh, I guess they draw the line at draws. There's no shame in it. There's no shame in doing what you feel you have to do as long as it's within the guidelines of legality and uh, you know, within the guidelines of the law and uh, decency. Do it. Don't hesitate. Pull that trigger instead of the other trigger. Jump in both feet instead of jumping out the car, jumping out a window, jumping off the bridge. So it's not worth it. I see how much pain um, I put my family in, and uh, my sons specifically. At that age, he was really just trying to figure things out. Uh, there was so much going on for him at that time. We had just moved from one area to another. Um, you know, he was getting back on track where we were living at one time. There, the school wasn't giving him what he needed. Uh, he regressed in his progress. He stopped speaking. Uh, started again with a lot of the grunting and, and the screaming. My oldest, she just internalized everything, and my youngest, God bless her, at that age, she just, she didn't know any better, and I mean, I was working nights, so she hardly saw me as it was, but to see the confusion on his face, to hear his upset, to hear um, him crying at the top of the stairs, Mom, why is Daddy, you know, leaving, she's, well, he's got to go to work. Well, he won't be here in the morning, and it was just, uh, God, that wasn't when I was in the hospital, that was when I was out of my head and out of my home, and, uh, oh, come on, man, I want to get over this police officer is, like, right behind me. Come on, douche nugget. 
it. Yeah, the right lane won't slow down enough for me to get over. Hammerhead. Thank you. Because now I had a speed in order to get over. But. Yeah, get the help. Before it's it's too late. Yeah. The, the number of people you affect and you hurt by ending your own life or or worse. Pay up, uh, you know, it, it's far greater than the number of people that would be hurt uh, if you go and get the help you need or put yourself in a better position, put yourself in a better place. Uh, for me, at that time, you know, I lost my bearings and there was somebody else on the other end playing me like a fiddle and, you know, the Pied Piper and I'm went right along with it. Like a fool. Like a gosh damn fool. So. Not to mention, getting the help that you need as soon as you can will, uh, will cut down on the years of regret that you have to live with. God damn regrets a son of a bitch. Heaviest anchor I've ever been, uh, ever pulled. But, yeah, get help, seek help, professional help. And if somebody tells you, ah, oh, you don't need help, you don't need to go, don't listen, because they don't know. They really don't know. Ooh, thank goodness you didn't pull me over. See, I knew it was a police car. Yeah, you guys can throw all the soccer mom stickers you want all over the cars. I still know, I still know, not to mention when you get close enough, I can see your lights in the windows, and you know, you're super tinted out, and uh, several antennas on the roof. Matter of fact, I passed this guy before, it's a I Anyhow, they don't know, they don't have your best interests in, in mind. Another thing is to try to surround yourself with people who do have your best interest. It's not always going to be at the forefront of their mind, but it's there. At the time when I went to the hospital, somebody that was close to me at that time was saying, you didn't need to go. You don't need to go to the hospital. What's wrong? Like, you said. And it was out of fear that they weren't going to have what they were hoping to have afterwards. So, I mean, that is a slap in the face. When I realized it, come on, asshole, they're stopping in the other lane. Why are you stopping? Uh, it was such a slap in the face when I thought about it. So, wait a minute. You much rather have had me, you know, end up in a worse place than I already was just for your own you know, satisfaction for whatever you're going to get out of it. And you weren't going to get much out of me <laughs> because if I didn't get that help, things were going to get a whole hell of a lot worse. I'm trying not to go into a whole nother can of worms here, but the uh, this person was pulling strings that I didn't even realize were being pulled. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's just say it took me years, and I thank God that I can do this. I've forgiven the person, uh, not outwardly to their face or that they would hear it because, well, no. Um, I've forgiven the person but not the action. I can't forgive the action. As I said before, we're human. We make errors. That happens. We're not perfect. But, no. We'll forgive the actions. 
you know, my wife even tried to warn these people, you don't know this man, uh, when she was taking me to the, uh, well, that's right, I can't assume this way, uh, taking me, well, I was at the hospital and she was visiting, uh, my wife, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, no bickering, no fighting, it was just a straight shoot. You don't know what you're getting yourself into. She told this person, I've been with him. We were, I think, in about 17 years at that time. So, and we had dated for about two, three years. So, you know, we had been, been together for about 20 years. She said, I have seen him at his worst times, you know, till date. And there's times when I myself can't do anything to help it, to stop it, to you know, make it any easier on the children. I have to grab and go. You know, if it's let's go to Grandma and Pop Pops, if it's uh, you know let's go for a walk, something, anything to get them away from from me and my words so much my actions, but actions you know, tend to follow words shortly, but thankfully it didn't really come down to that, um, you know, I never got physical with anybody, but you know, that's another thing, if somebody who knows and you know, knows this person and they're telling you, hey, this person's not well. Listen to them. If they've known this person, if there's history, you know, substantial history, take their word for it. Don't mess with this person, you know. And they did. They didn't listen. And you just threw three more people in the mix to get hurt. Because you were being selfish and thinking only of yourself. So, you know, these, these things cut deep. Not just, you know, through your skin and your muscle and past your bone, maybe out the other side where, no. When you say cuts deep, it's cutting deep. It's mother, father, you know, sister, brother, little brother, little sister, cousins, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, friends. Yeah, <laughs> goes on and on so get that help ask for help reach out to somebody don't ever think that you're you're burdening somebody by um, asking you know, for some advice or asking for a you know a one-on-one -on -one, hey uh, can I talk to you for a minute and you know I'm having some real having a hard time yada 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 because the ones who don't get that uh, that help from from others, or that uh, that pat on the back to say, "Hey, I'm behind you. Don't worry. You know, I'm in your corner." People who don't get that are the ones who end up taking the lives of other people, and sometimes themselves as well. And my wife is texting me while I'm driving with an officer behind me. So now this is killing me, because now I really want to see what she said, but now her thing would be, well, I didn't tell you to read it while you're driving. Could have waited until you got home. My luck, I'll wait till I get home to read it, and then it'll be something like, oh, can you stop at the store and grab such and such? <laughs> uh, but, all right, folks. Uh, I think I'm going to cut it off right there, but, you know, each one teach one, everyone help one, one another. And uh, don't ever turn a blind eye to what you think may not be a problem. And she's texting me again. All right, folks. I will talk to you later. <laughs>